privilege of sitting today to pass sentence on you, Craig Crouch, and you, Gemma Barton, for offences of the utmost seriousness committed in your home during 2020. Mr. Crouch, the jury has convicted you of murdering Jacob Crouch, of cruelty to Jacob during his short life by assaulting him repeatedly. The jury and I have had to see many photographs and videos of him during the long trial. He was a happy, smiling, bubbly baby who never complained about the horrific treatment he was receiving. He had to put up with it, and he did, often with a smile and laughter in defiance of his tormentor. Even those of us who never knew Jacob personally will miss him. For his wider family, the pain of his loss will endure for years and decades and must evoke the profound sympathy of all reasonable people. It is nothing less than tragic that he will never become a boy and then a man. The following brief account of the facts respects the jury's verdicts and is a fact of which I am sure beyond reasonable doubt. If I am unsure of something, I will say so. Mr. Crouch and Ms. Barton, you met in 2019 when you, Ms. Barton, were pregnant with Jacob by another man who had assaulted you. Your mutual passion was genuine, but dis destructive for those around you. You cared nothing for their rights and interests, putting your physical and emotional relationship above all else. Mr. Crouch, in your conversations with Ms. Barton, you were domineering, aggressive, boastful, and arrogant. You, Ms. Barton, responded with meek and submissive, misplaced affection. You, Mr. Crouch, told implausible, bragging lies to Ms. Barton and to others about your supposed wealth, status, importance, qualifications, and experience. Among your many lies, you falsely told Ms. Barton you regularly met with senior politicians, including the Prime Minister, flew helicopters, earned a high salary in a senior management role, had custody of your daughter, and had qualifications in sociology, massage, and hairdressing. You, Ms. Barton, chose not to challenge these obvious lies, though in your heart you must have known they were untrue. Mr. Crouch, you were a shop floor worker doing a decent job you could have been well satisfied with. He promised you, Ms. Barton, a car and money. There was no car, and you gave him control of your money. He had debts. You had your suspicions, but preferred to put them out of your mind. As you accepted at trial, you took much of what he said with a pinch of salt, but, quote, put blinkers on, unquote. Mr. Crouch, you assumed the role of Jacob's father. Once old bruises started to appear on him. I am sure that you, Mr. Crouch, caused those bruises. All or nearly all the injury that caused them were, I am sure, deliberately inflicted. Later, in the last few months of his life, Jacob suffered about 40 rib fractures. Lastly, at the end of December 2020, he received a blow that pierced his stomach and ruptured his bowel, causing him to die from peritonitis during the night of 29th to 30th December 2020. You Mr. you, Mr. Crouch, struck the blows that fractured Jacob's ribs, tore the lining of his stomach, and ruptured his bowel, causing him to die. You, Ms. Barton, noticed the bruises and did nothing to protect him from suffering those injuries. You may not have been aware of the rib fractures, but during the time when they were inflicted, you either knew or should have known of the risk to Jacob from Mr. Crouch and did nothing to protect him from it. I am sure that you, Ms. Barton, on the night of 29th to 30th December 2020, were aware at the time of the assault, or became aware very shortly after it, that Jacob had been assaulted by Mr. Crouch that evening or night. Neither of you sought medical help for him, and he died at some point during the night. I cannot be sure whether he died before or after 5 a.m. on 30th December, when you, Ms. Barton, told police, and later this jury, you, were, you went to check on him and found him alive. I am sure you knew once Jacob had died that Mr. Crouch was responsible for his death. The two of you each denied responsibility individually, and you, Ms. Barton, tried to protect Mr. Crouch by concealing your knowledge of what he had done to Jacob on the night he died. In the words of Count Two 
of the indictment of which the jury has convicted you, Ms. Barton, and I quote, uh, you were aware or should have been aware that there was a significant risk of serious harm being caused to Jacob Crouch by the unlawful acts of Craig Crouch and failed to take such steps as you should reasonably have been expected to have taken to protect Jacob Crouch from that risk. And the act occurred in circumstances of the kind that you foresaw or ought to have foreseen, end quote. Uh, while I am not sure that until the night Jacob died, you were actually aware of the significant risk of serious harm to Jacob posed by Mr. Crouch, or that you foresaw that he would cause serious harm to Jacob, there is no doubt that you should have been aware of that risk, no doubt that you should have foreseen circumstances such as Mr. Crouch striking Jacob and causing him serious harm, and no doubt that you failed to protect Jacob from that risk. I come to the sentences of the court for the crimes of which the two of you stand convicted. You, Mr. Crouch, are guilty of murdering Jacob. Only one sentence is permitted by law for that crime, imprisonment for life. I have to determine the minimum term of imprisonment which you must serve before being eligible to apply to the parole board to be considered for release. To do so, I have to consider the seriousness of the offence to determine the minimum period you must serve before consideration can be given to your release. A minimum term is not the same as an ordinary sentence of imprisonment where a defendant will normally serve half or two-thirds of that sentence before being released on licence. A minimum term is the term that must be served before your case may be referred to the parole board for consideration of your release upon licence. It means the actual length of time that you will spend in prison before that process can take place. Whether or not you are released after the minimum term expires will be for the parole board to consider at the end of that term. The parole board will not permit your release at that stage unless it is satisfied that you are not a risk to the public and are ready for release. If you are released at that time or any later time, you will be released on licence with specific conditions attached and may be recalled to continue serving your life sentence if you breach any licence conditions imposed upon you. What then, <clears throat> what then should be the length of the minimum term? I consider that the correct starting point is applying the provisions of the sentencing code one of 15 years. However, there must be a substantial uplift in the circumstances of this case. I have to consider the aggravating features of this offence of murder, taking into account the combination of that offence and the other offences associated with it. The first and very serious aggravating feature is Jacob's age and vulnerability. He was a small baby who had not yet learned to walk or talk. Sadly, he never did so. To state the obvious, he could not defend himself. Second, for that reason, your attacks on him were an abuse of trust of the grossest kind. You knew he was dependent on the adults caring for him to protect him from harm. Instead of protecting him, you killed him. Third, you failed to seek any medical help for Jacob at any time before 7.15 a.m. on 30th December 2020, even when he was gravely injured, as you must have known he was. Had you or Ms. Barton sought such help, he would have needed morphine, but he would have lived and recovered from his injuries. Fourth, you exploited the selfishness, weakness and gullibility of Ms. Barton to influence her against protecting her son from you. You used lies and bullying tactics on her to deflect any suspicions she might have that you were mistreating Jacob. You sought to attribute his bruises and cuts to natural causes. You accused Ms. Barton of not trusting you when you went up to Jacob's cot without her present. I do not at this stage include the suffering you caused him before that night, since that is the subject of another offence to which I am coming. Seventh, you joined with Ms Barton in giving a false account to the paramedics, police and medical staff at the hospital to conceal your guilt. You maintained these false stories for years, up to the trial. You sought additional protection for yourself, resuming your influence over Ms Barton sending her a Valentine's card and inventing a character called Robert, supposedly a solicitor, 
with the aim of exerting control over her use of legal services in order to minimize the risk of her telling the truth about what you had done to Jacob that night. I consider next the other associated offenses. There are three. Would impel me to raise the minimum term by doubling it from the starting point of 15 years to one of 30 years. I must then consider any mitigating factors. It is, it, sorry, it is profoundly distressing and depressing to say so, but you are in some ways an unlikely murderer. You have no previous convictions for any offences, whether of violence or otherwise. You have no history of drug or alcohol abuse. You did not have a chaotic lifestyle, it was not premeditated, that you did not intend to kill him, and that you were distressed at his death. You are conscientious, a hard worker, and you believe in discipline and order. You did try in a misguided and deluded way to build something you believed would be, or at least resemble, a stable family life, albeit one firmly grounded in your own overbearing dominance and control of those around you. These points afford limited mitigation. You have not shown any remorse for what you did. You have not explained what you did or apologised to any of your many victims, direct and indirect. I reduce the minimum term by two years to take account of the limit limited mitigating features I have identified. The minimum term you will serve will therefore be one of 28 years. I turn to the concurrent sentences on counts 6, 7 and 8. On count 6, the offence is one of sustained cruelty to Jacob over many months, causing first bruising and then rib fractures. Although the maximum sentence has increased since the offence was committed and the new higher maximum does not apply to your offence, the current guideline, effective from 1st April 2023, applies with appropriate adjustment, as I shall explain later. Of its kind, the offence is of the utmost seriousness. The suffering caused to Jacob was intense and prolonged. The harm is category one, and the culpability is at level A. The range in the current guideline is seven to 12 years, based on a maximum of 14 years, which does not work, because the maximum sentence here is 10 years. Six will be one of eight years to run concurrently, based on a maximum of 10 years. It is close to being as serious an offense of cruelty to a child as can be envisaged. That completes the sentencing in your case, Mr. Crouch. I turn to your case, Ms. Barton. You have been convicted by the jury of two crimes. You are widely considered to be a loving, caring, thoughtful, and reliable person. I do not doubt that you are all those things at some times and in some circumstances, but you did not act in that way in the matters leading to your conviction for these two offences. I have also considered and taken into account the three psychiatric reports about you. I repeat my thanks to the three psychiatrists, Dr. Puri, Dr. Shinoy, and Dr. Kennedy, for <coughs> producing those reports at short notice during the trial. They were prepared for the purpose of helping me to consider and decide what course the trial might take. I accept that they also address, quite briefly, your history, including a history of social anxiety, disorder, and depression, the prescribing of sertraline in 2019, and antidepressants again in 2021. That psychiatric evidence does not itself provide strong support for you having a significantly impaired mental function, which substantially diminishes your culpability, by which I mean the level of blame that attaches to you for these crimes. At the most, your history of mental disorder may have made you more easily susceptible to manipulation, influence, and coercion amounting to psychological violence in a domestic context, but I would accept that anyway, even without the psychiatric reports. Mr. Crouch did exert such influence and did manipulate you in a manner accounting to what is now, amounting to what is now commonly called coercive and controlling behavior. Of that, there is ample evidence in the many text messages that were read to the jury at the trial. I accept also 
that your time on remand in custody has been more distressing and difficult than it would otherwise have been because you have been treated for breast cancer while in custody. I take all these matters into account. On count two, causing or allowing Jacob to die, there is a new guide guideline, as I have said, effective from 1st April 2023. It applies in this case, but subject to adjustment because the maximum sentence increased to life imprisonment for offences committed after 28th June 2022 is 14 years in your case because the offence was committed before that date in 2020. It is permissible to look at the older guidelines dating from January 2019, but contrary to the submission made in your defence, it is not appropriate or lawful to ignore completely the more recent guideline. The Crown accepts that a downward adjustment must be made to the ranges and starting points to take account of the lower maximum sentences applicable at the time these two offences were committed. I return to my findings. I am sure that you, Ms Barton, became aware during the evening or night of 29th to 30th December 2020 that Jacob had been seriously assaulted by Mr Crouch, seriously enough that any reasonable parent would call for immediate and urgent medical attention. I am not sure that you perceived him in, to be in danger of serious injury at any time before that. I am sure that you must have been aware that at least some of the bruising went beyond accidental knocks and scrapes. You were Jacob's main carer. I am not sure that you were aware at any time before his death that his ribs had been fractured. The medical evidence included acknowledgement that rib fractures are not always perceived by onlookers. I accept that this was a case of you allowing Jacob to die, not a case of you causing Jacob to die, which would be more serious. Aside from the night he died, I accept that the case is one where you ought to have been aware of the risk to him of serious physical harm rather than a case where you were actually aware of that risk. At least I cannot be sure you were. On the night he died, you did become actually aware of the risk to him of serious physical harm and indeed aware that Mr Crouch had seriously assaulted him. The harm is category one because the victim has died rather than suffered injury. Certain features point to high level culpability. First, there were prolonged and multiple incidents of serious cruelty. The evidence was there to see, but you chose not to face up to it. Second, very significant force was used against Jacob. Again, the signs were visible, but you ignored them and treated the injuries as accidental. Third, there was deliberate disregard for Jacob's welfare. It is also pointed out by the Crown that you failed to take any steps to protect the victim from offences in which those features were present. That adds nothing. Failing to protect the victim is very similar to deliberate disregard for the victim's welfare and, moreover, is part of the definition of the offence. There is one significant feature pointing to lesser culpability, that you are, as I accept, a victim of domestic abuse, including by coercion or intimidation, linked to the offence. Mr Crouch intimidated you into trusting him with sole care of Jacob, though he was clearly unfit for that role. For example, he accused you of lacking trust in him when you wanted to join him upstairs on occasions when he was bathing Jacob. You did not have the confidence to confront him when he kicked Jacob's cot. I reject the submission of the Crown that the level of your culpability is very high with Category 1 harm. That is unrealistic on the facts and would be difficult to apply if correct because the offence predates June 2022, yet the sentencing range for that category exceeds the maximum sentence. I think the, the level of culpability is at the borderline between high level B and medium level C. I will take seven years as the starting point. 
there are no statutory aggravating features. The non-statutory aggravating features relied on are, first, failure to seek medical help at the time of the assault or in the 10 hours or so that followed. Again, I bear in mind that as the Crown accepts, there is some danger of double counting. Second, Jacob suffered grievously before his death. That is significant because you let it happen. Third, you joined in a deliberate cover-up and told lies from the outset, and up to and during the trial, you have lost your only son, and that is, I accept, substantial punishment, both because of the loss itself and because of the shame and guilt you must endure for letting it happen. I do not count in your favour Mr Crouch's coercive and controlling behaviour towards you because I have already taken that factor into account in determining the level of your culpability. Balancing the aggravating and mitigating features, I conclude that the former outweigh the latter, and I would increase the sentence to one of eight years' imprisonment, subject to what I am about to say. Drawing the threads together, the sentence on count two would be one of eight years, and the sentence on count seven would be one of three years, which would make a total of 11 years. The sentences are required to run consecutively, but I am required to apply what is called the principle of totality, which means that I must impose an overall sentence which is proportionate to the seriousness of the offending overall. Applying that principle, I will reduce each of the sentences by half a year, which makes the sentence on count two one of seven and a half years, and the sentence on count seven, one of two and a half years. The overall sentence is therefore one of ten years' imprisonment. For completeness, Ms Barton, I confirm that I have considered the statutory question of dangerousness and whether to impose an extended sentence and have concluded that you are not dangerous within the meaning of the statu statutory provision and that an extended sentence is not necessary to protect the public given the length of your determinate sentence and the removal of the pernicious influence on you of Mr. Crouch. Mr. Crouch, please stand. The sentence of the court is imprisonment for life for the murder of Jacob Crouch with a minimum term of 28 years, less the time you have already spent in custody while on remand, which I am told is 395 days as at today. On count six, cruelty to Jacob during his lifetime, the sentence is eight years' imprisonment to run concurrently. You may sit down. Ms Barton, please stand. The sentence of the court in your case is one of seven years, six months' imprisonment on count two, allowing Jacob to die. The total sentence is therefore one of ten years' imprisonment. The period you have spent in custody while on remand will count towards the 10-year sentence. I am told that as at today, that period is 395 days. You will serve half your sentence in custody and the remainder on license. Any corrections to the time spent in custody on remand and any statutory surcharge may be dealt with administratively without further listing of the case. You may now both go down with the officers, please. <coughs> 